In this video, I'll show you how to turn your SketchUp model into drawings and plans with a tool called Layout. Unfortunately, Layout is not available in the free version of SketchUp, but if you buy the pro version of SketchUp and you download it to your computer, Layout is included and you can take any model in SketchUp and create actual drawings and plans so that you can take those sort of things to your workshop and build the project in real life. So. In this example, I've got a little hexagon shelf, and if I wanted to build this in real life, it would be helpful to have a set of plans, so I'll show you how to make those. The first thing you're going to do is change the background. Um, if I were to import this into layout, it would include the blue sky and sort of gray background. You don't have to worry about the axis, like the green axis or the red axis. That won't be included, um, but the background will. So. We'll change the style by going to Window, selecting Styles, and you could select a style that it has a white background and still includes the color of your model. That's totally okay. It will show up in Layout just like that. Or you could, under the little drop down here, you could go to something like Straight Lines, and that'll just give you simple black and white lines, which is really easy on your printer. Or you could also go to sketchy edges, which is kind of a hand-drawn look, and you could reverse it with a black background and white lines, or whatever you prefer in your drawings and plans. You can select that here. So I'll go with something simple like this. That way uh, it's really easy to see and really easy to print out. And um, yeah, so the next thing we're going to do is create scenes. Now you can think of scenes inside of SketchUp as like a snapshot or sort of screenshot of your model. So if you want the front of your project, you'll take a scene if you want the side. And instead of moving around with the orbit tool here, there's a way that you can shortcut uh, to each uh, little orientation. So if I hit Command-1, I think it would be Control-1 on Windows, but I'm on a Mac. It gives me the top, and you can see right here in the corner it says Top. If I hit Command-2, it's the bottom. Looks almost the same since this uh, piece is symmetrical. If I hit Command-3, it gives me a front shot, and you can play around with these numbers here and get all sorts of angles. So Command-3, front shot, I'll definitely want that. So now I need to make a scene of this. So the way that you do that is you go to Window, and you go to Scenes, and when you've got your model set in the orientation that you'd like, go over here and hit the plus button just like that and so now that's the first scene so we can name the scene right here I'll call it front and that's our first scene and if we want a top orientation I can go to my project here hit command 2 and you can move around with the orbit tool and get it however you want you don't have to use those shortcuts but I'll take a scene of that I'll hit command 5 that's kind of a left side scene we'll get a scene of that okay so now we have our scenes. If you wanted individual pieces of your project, you're actually going to need to click on the components or pieces that you want. And remember, you can hit M for the Move tool and then hit Option on a Mac or Control on Windows. And then you can move a copy of it. So I would move that pretty far over so that I can't see it when I'm taking scenes of the other one. And you could come in here and do the same thing. You could make a scene of each little component. And if you want the front shot of that, you could hit Command-3. And that lines it up. So with this other scene that I took of it that was a little off-center, I'll just delete it by clicking on it and hitting the minus button. And so now, if I hit Command-3 again, oops, it went to my other project. If I click on this one, hit Command-3, it's got a straight orientation from the front, and I can hit the plus button, and so now we've got a scene of that. So that's how you make your scenes. These are the images that are going to show up in your plans and drawings. So take your time with that, and then once you're ready, you'll need to save your project first. It won't let you send anything to Layout, so go to File, Save, and then go to File, Send to Layout. So now we're in the Layout tool so that we can create our plans. So I'll just give you a basic walkthrough of how all, all the stuff in here works and the most common stuff you'll use. 
So if you wanted to change this uh, to a different scene, by default it gives you the last scene that you took. So you'll click on the scene so that there's blue lines around it. That lets you know it's selected. And then you'll just right click on it and go to scenes and you can select whichever scene you want. So I'll select the front one here. If you wanted to have multiple components or multiple scenes on one page, you could just make a copy of it by, um, on a Mac it's Command C, it's Control C on Windows, and then hit Command V or Control V and that paste a copy. So now we've got two copies and we can, like I said, right click on one of them and change them to a different piece. So now we've got multiple scenes on one page and if you make a copy of one and then add a page, you can paste that copy. And now you've got two separate pages, which you can toggle back and forth between right here on these arrow buttons. And so I can delete this off of my first page, go to the second page here. But um, let me show you how to add dimensions, because that's probably the most important part here. It's the reason I use the layout tool. So when you have the scene that you want, um, Go ahead and make it the size you'd like on the page. We're going to export this as a PDF, so think about that. If you want it printable, you should consider kind of how you've got it laid out in your page. And so when we add dimensions, all we have to do is hit D for dimension, and that selects this tool here. Or you can just click on it. And when you see that it's selected and it has this dark gray box here, before you make any dimensions, I would suggest going to Window and then dimension style. So notice mine is set to meter and I'm in the United States so I don't know much um, about meters so I'm gonna go to inches and then for length here instead of a decimal place for my measurements I'd like it to be fractional so I'm gonna click on that and then I'll make the precision 1 16th of an inch and then it th this will change down here the extension lines this will change the gap uh, you'll see what that is. I'll show you in just a second. But basically, I always mess with this, make it inches. And once you do that one time, uh, the rest of the dimensions you make will follow that style. So if I click on this corner here, I've got the dimension tool selected, and click on this corner. Now I can pull this out, and that is the exact length from that corner to that corner. So that little gap um, thing in the bottom of the dimension, let me go back to it. The dimension style here, extension lines, if you change that, it will change this gap here. So you can make it where it's further away, where it's not touching your project. Or if you set it to zero, the lines would come right out of your project. So I usually don't mess with any of that, but I don't like the size of this text. So I usually make it bigger. And the way that you do that is click on your dimension here. The blue lines will let you know it's selected. And then you can go to text, you can select bold. Or if you look at the text, it has the shortcuts here. Since I'm on a Mac, it's Command B. It's probably Control B on Windows. Um, and then to make it bigger, I can also hit Command Plus or Command Minus to make it smaller. So with it selected, I'll hit Command Plus, and I'll just keep hitting the plus sign until it's as big as I want. So, um, and again, if you want to uh, make it bold or anything, Command B does that. Command U underlines it, so you've got lot, lots of options there. And one thing I'll say is that I still have not found how to make these lines thicker. I would prefer that they were as thick as these lines on the project, or even thicker. Um, but so far I haven't found that out, so if you figure that out, please let me know in the comments. So that's how you make dimensions. If I wanted to do dimensions from this corner to this corner, I can pull that down wherever I want. I could go up with it. You can kind of set it wherever you want. So um, I'm gonna set it down here in the bottom. I'm going to hit spacebar for the selector tool just like you would inside SketchUp. Click on that, hit Command B to make it bold and hit Command plus. Just hit plus you know, 10 or 12 times until it's where I want it. That's what I usually do. And I'll just make one more dimension just to show you. Um, we'll do from this corner to this corner and then we'll pull that out hit sp spacebar for the selector tool and then hit this a whole bunch of times and then hit command B and so now we've got our dimensions so if you're making plans 
Like I mentioned, you can do the same thing with this component on the second page. You can add pages here, toggle back and forth between them right here, and you can also hit T for the text tool. You could draw a box to put your text into, and I could say um, front of hexagon, and you can also click on that. So hit uh, spacebar for the selector tool, click on that, and you can do the same thing. You can hit command B for bold. You can hit command plus or control plus if you're on Windows as many times as you'd like, and you can move that around. So um, yeah, you could even type a paragraph here about instructions on your plans. And if you're having trouble with these shortcuts for like bold and size, and I've confused you there, you can just go to text and select back and forth just like that, but be much quicker if you get the shortcuts down. Um, but yeah, so that's the basics of creating plans and drawings in layout. And like I mentioned, it's not available in the free version, but if you get the pro version, I think you'll find this um, pretty helpful. So anyway, let me know if you have any questions or comments or feedback, and I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.